Potent Pondering back with another video. Yo, please come in, thumbs up this video, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification, hit all notifications so you have my videos in your possession each and every time I go live or I do uploads. Please make sure that you support this channel. The cash app is in the description of the video. So yo, let's jump into it. The first thing I want to talk about is this whole situation with uh, Pop Smoke, you know, his uh, alleged assailant. Uh, murderer, block star. He was on No Jumper. Listen, I want to tell you something. I'm so tired of these people running to the No Jumper, um, into the Vlad TV. It's just like, yo, they be pimping our community out. And then especially for this situation. So listen, I want to read this article to you that I've got from Hot Hip Hop. So Adam 22 received a whole lot of backlash for interviewing block star who was conflicting, who has conflicting feelings about Pop Smoke's death. So No Jumper, No Jumper, Adam 22 controversial interview with Pop Smoke alleged killer Blockstar resulted in a lot of backlash online for its insensitivity and platforming for those unaware. Authorities charged him for the 2020 murder, three of which including um, Blockstar were minors when the crime took place. So I just want to get into some of what Blockstar said. He said, I'm not sorry about nothing. Blockstar, ex Blockstar expressed over concerning Pop Smoke's death. It shouldn't have happened, but I ain't sorry. If I could go back, I'll go back, but I ain't sorry. Niggas die every day. Pop Smoke was rapping about it, all type of ish. So I ain't sorry about it. Yo, could you, yo, this is crazy to me. Um, So he said, I send my condolences to the family. I wish it never happened, but I don't regret nothing. Let me tell you something. These are the type of Negroes that I wish to never come across. I'm just like telling you, yo, let me tell you something. This whole new generation of people, this goes deep. And I'm just not going to go deep into it. But, yo, think about the crack era, right? I want you to think about that. So, 80s babies. Think about, like, them coming up to the crack era. Think about those kids who, who were children born off of that. The, the remnants of the crack era is still alive. Like, yo, let me tell you something. These kids out here is on demon time. They don't care about nobody's feelings. They like empathy what happens to being an upstanding human being and like you know kind of like having like honor and morals like and not wanting to disappoint your family everybody want to listen to these rappers like king von and want to rap about and um glorify having bodies it's just crazy so you know that this is crazy so dj academics he had a comment about this and i don't even understand how he's speaking on this the way that he tried to boost up the kendrick lamar and drake beef so dj academics calls out adam 22 for no jumper for interviewing um pop smoke for Inter, um, interview on Blockstar. So he said, here in the media, we have to take a little bit of accountability. I don't, I don't respect this coming from academics. So I wonder if he knows the repercussions of what he's doing. The nigga um, got killed got killed the nigga he killed with somebody in hip-hop then gets paid to tell a story on a hip-hop platform. It's dage it's a dangerous precedent via DJ Academics. Listen, leave your comments below. Let me let me know what you think about this boy going around doing interviews on. At, uh, come on, out of all places, he shouldn't did no interview. But then you want Adam Twenty Two, no jumper with this BS. Yo, this is just crazy. So let's move on. The next thing I want to talk about is. So Cardi B's minion, Ken Barbie, and Armand Wiggins going back and forth on Twitter. Right. I just want to say this. Um, yo, and I know that people will understand what I'm saying when I say it. Let me just tell you this. Cardi B, in my opinion, this is my opinion. This is my channel, my platform. She is racist. She's a colorist. I have the same issues with her that I have with Claudia Jordan. She's a racist. She's a colorist. She uses black people for, she uses them as a commodity to get what, you know, she can get up out of them. That's how I feel about Cardi B. You've seen Cardi B on 4th of July around all of those black people. Where are the Dominican people that you are, that you're of? Where are your people at? But you always want to get around and flick around the black people and use them. Now, when it comes to this whole, um, um, social media game and all of that. Um, Jason Lee, I don't know if he, I don't know if he has any lineage, lineage, lineage of, um, you know, Latino or whatever, right? But Kim Barbie, let me tell you something. It's a identity. It's identity politics when it comes to her. So with Kim Barbie, she's close to him because look how he looks. She's close to Jason Lee. Look how he looks. Armand, let me tell you something. I'm gonna be honest with you, and I have to be frank here. When I first came across YouTube and the way that our mom would do his would do his commentary on Cardi B, he kept it really real on her, right? Now something happened between Nikki on uh, follow him at a certain point or time or whatever, and he got upset. And I felt like he was going really hard. Like he was going hard at Cardi B first. Like he would say nice things about her, but he kept it straight up blunt and just was raw about it, right? So, so something happened in between that where I felt as though that Nikki, she unfollowed uh, him or whatever, and he got upset about it. And it was like he was championing on Cardi B, like 
tough. Almost to the point where I feel like you gave her this fake illusion that she really was that bitch. So now where Ken Barbie is talking about, oh, you're dragging Cardi and you're doing this and you're doing that. They feel like you're you're being fake about it. And I feel like you really just being honest. And that's what happens when you pump people up for so long and you make them think that they think that they really that. And they not really that. Let me tell you something. Ken Barbie know that she not really that. He, he's just happy. Listen, let me tell you something. And the way that he talked about Armand in that space where he was just saying, like, you know, he pretty much said that Cardi exposed the conversation that they, that he had with her. And he made it. He, he tried to make it seem like on some like some shit like, oh, you didn't post me. You didn't do this. You didn't do that. or Whatever the case may be. Listen, let me tell you something, Armand. Cardi, she has already picked Jason Lee, um, Kim Barbie. You will never like I'm, I'm not saying that you, you will. You obviously are somebody in the realm because she she cares about your opinion. But. I feel like the way that she already has that, it's almost like a bad taste where it's like she's making it seem like you're vying for her love and her attention. Like, let me tell you something. You got to look at your platform. Like, even when you look at, like, Fox Soul and then you look at your platform, your platform gets substantially more views than Fox Soul. It's like you got to look at it like I don't have a reason to be mad. Cardi B, yeah, you should be able to do any commentary you want to on her. Who cares? You know what I'm saying? But you done kissed her ass so much that... Even when you don't agree with something, it's like you hating. Just like when Joe Buttons will say something about Cardi B, he hating because she think that she close to he's close to Nikki. So I just feel like this is why, like sometimes I'm gonna be honest with you. Even with me, when it comes to like, let me just give you an example. You see somebody like I love Nicki Minaj, right? But I like to do my commentary and I don't like to feel controlled. Like when I see somebody like a Khalil who's close to Nicki, I feel like somebody like that has to watch it. I, I love Nicki and I maybe one day I would meet her. She's like my stuff and interactive, but I don't vie to be in that type of position or whatever, right? Because I feel like there's some control that comes with that. I feel like as long as you deliver your commentary and you do your thing it's like that's all that matters you know what my goal is my goal is not meeting these celebrities my goal is meeting my threshold every month on this channel with dollars my goal is meeting my threshold to make sure that yeah if i'm gonna do videos and upload then yeah i need a car payment paid my internet bill gotta be paid my canva bill to make my thumbnails gotta be paid anything that i do additional my my any my editing software gotta be paid that's that's the goals that i have like it gotta pay for itself it gotta make sense my goal is not to meet these people like you know my goal is to get the money, supplement the income, and be able to hold on to more of my money and be able to just do whatever I want to do. You understand what I'm saying? Like, just to keep it going. Of course, grow and grow and grow. But in my eyes, I don't think that you will... The, the way that Kim Barbie tried to, like, leak and try to, like, talk about, like, you know, oh, he said, you'll never be Kim Barbie. You, you'll never be this. Why, you know, whatever. Listen... Keep doing the commentary. Keep growing on your own. Like, if it should happen and you align with somebody and it's genuine, yeah, but I wouldn't be vying from no fucking love or attention from fucking Cardi B. What? What? That is crazy to me. That is really crazy to me. Anyway, I'm going to move on from that situation. Y'all leave your comments below in regards to that. Next thing I want to talk about is Nicki Minaj. So Nicki Minaj and Miss Deb. Y'all know that Nicki and Miss Deb went through something recently with the whole Little Kim situation. So Deb was interviewing with somebody and said that she tried to get Nicki Minaj together with Little Kim and all of that. Nicki came out and said, I was screamed on you this, that, or whatever, right? So... We seen last night Nicki Minaj went on live with Miss Deb and Nicki was um Chanel down and Miss Deb was in the background and Miss Deb made a um Nicki said that you know she's Miss Deb was like her second mom or whatever and Deb was like oh my industry mom Deb said your industry mom and Nicki was like no you're just you know my second mom or whatever now I will say this I know a lot of people were questioning, they were wondering, like, oh, is Nikki going to be cool with Deb again? Like, you know, whatever, right? I think what it is is that, and I don't, let me know if you understand this where I'm coming from too, right? I'm just, I only can speak for 80s babies, but I know when we were, when we were raised, people were always try to like keep us in a child's place or whatever. So I love being grown and being an adult, but I will tell you, even as being a 41 year old man, I still feel like a child in my family sometimes, like the way that they try to make you feel like you're young. Like, I don't know, like the adults in my family, they still kind of look at you like, like a child. So it's like, I feel like Nikki, she said what she said to Miss Deb, but I still feel like she loves her and, you know, everything is good. Miss Deb posted something on, um, on Instagram because she's out there in Dublin and she apologized to Nikki and they're good. Like, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes I feel like when you have a disagreement with a person, it doesn't mean it's the end of the world. It's all about how you handle it. Like me, I'm big on that. Like if I, if I did something to you, 
address me in a proper way because once you disrespect me, there's no coming back from it. I'm not a person who was raised in abuse. You can't keep doing stuff to me and getting over with it. And then I'm going to keep saying, okay, I apologize. Okay. Okay. No, you one and I'm one and done, especially when I factor in, you're not my family. You're literally a person from the internet. You did this to me. Yeah, I'm done. I'm one and done one and done. And I understand that people deserve forgiveness, but I haven't got to that point in life. 41 years old. I've never been wrong about my perception about an individual. You, you do me. Listen, one of my friends used to be like, first time on me, second time. I'm not giving you a second time. I'm not doing it because, no, I shouldn't even have to go through that if I don't even know you like that. You understand what I'm saying? But they know each other like that. Nikki gave her another chance. So Nikki just had to pump her brakes and say, Miss Deb, don't do that again because, you know, it looks like it's coming from me. It's making little Kim think like she's on my mind and I want to, I want to patch this up. And ex you know what I'm saying? No, no. So listen. Get in the comments. Let me know what you think about Miss Deb and Nikki patching it up. You know what I'm saying? I had a really good day today. My cousin is here from New York. She's here with her boyfriend. So we went out to eat. We went to the Turkey Lake Hut. Had some really good food. I had like two drinks. Then we went to the mall and went shopping, copping. You know what I'm saying? So I just really wanted to come and do a video. You know what I'm saying? So let me know what you think about anything that I touch on from the Pop Smoke situation. Let me know what you think about his murder, his, his killer going on the damn interview spree. That shit is just crazy to me. Like, come on. No remorse, no sympathy or empathy or nothing. Come on. And then academics, stop it. You don't you don't encourage so many different beats and probably bloodshed throughout just doing commentary and all of that. I have an opinion on academics, too, but I'm not going to keep it. The Tariq Nashida me want to say something, but yeah, I'm not going to do it. I ain't going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Let me know what you think about Cardi B's situation with Armand Wiggins. And how, let me know if you peep that. Do you think that Cardi holds um, Kim Barbie and Jason Lee close? And Armand is just that little nigglet that, you know, she don't really show love to like that. She loved when he was booming her ass all over, you know, social media on his on Twitter. She, she loved when Nikki was getting dragged and all of that in spite of. But she's so weak. She couldn't. So let me tell you something. If I know that a person really don't like me like that and I see you going hard at another person, it's not going to make me feel good because you dragging them because i know that you don't like me you understand what i'm saying and you trying to boost me up and give me this type of i'm not saying that armand don't like cardi at all in any type of way but he used to give it up raw to her and then i just felt like he resumed going back to that see I feel like you should be able to do what you want to. The fuck getting close. As long as that check is clearing, as long as that deposit is being made, as long as goals is being met, that's all I'm about. My goals got to be met. My bills got to be paid. If I'm making videos and doing whatever I got to do, thresholds got to be met. Points got to be made. Like, you understand what I'm saying? It got to be. It has to be. It got to. You know what I'm saying? Potent pondering, never pandering. Subscribe to the channel. Support. Cash app is in the description of the video. Get in the comments. Let me know what you think. And I'm up out of here. Peace.